Good morning, guys. This is Mr. Murphy from Triangle Tech. Hi, my name is Bill Hutchison. I'm an instructor here at Triangle Tech. Today, we're going to talk about welding, the dangers that are present during welding, and the type of PPE we can use to protect ourselves from these dangers. There's different types of welding. There's shielded metal arc welding or stick welding. There's gas metal arc welding or MIG welding. There's gas tungsten arc welding or TIG welding. There is oxyacetylene welding. And then there's plasma cutting. MIG welding, metal inert gas welding, also known as gas metal arc welding or MIG welding in the industry. It uses an inert gas as the shielding over top of the arc to protect it from the atmosphere. It doesn't use a flux, so it's an open arc process. It's very bright. It's a semi-automatic process where the machine feeds the wire, but the welder controls the torch. It uses some CO2. It may use straight argon and mixtures of the two along with helium and oxygen to protect the arc from the atmosphere. It has ultraviolet light, visible light, and infrared light. Shielded metal arc welding or stick welding uses an electrode coated in flux that is manually fed by the welder itself. It doesn't have any inherent robotic features to it whatsoever. It is a shielded metal arc process, therefore one of the advantages is it's not quite as bright. Even though we may be using equivalent amperages, it is a lot less bright and our shielding that we use in our welding mask can be several shades lower. The gas tungsten arc welding or TIG welding that we teach here is also an open arc process. It uses gas for the shielding, not a flux. It has some inherent safety characteristics with it also. TIG welding or gas tungsten arc welding is a manual and semi-automatic process depending on how we're using it. Acetylene welding doesn't use any electricity, it just uses the torch. It does run at about 5,600 degrees. There is no ultraviolet light to worry about. Plasma arc cutting is a unique process. Plasma is the fourth state of matter. It's not gaseous, it's not liquid, it's not a solid. It's actual state of matter, the fourth one that we don't talk about. Where we line protons and neutrons up and they give us a feature called plasma gas. You see it in your fluorescent lights in your house and in your shops and things. Its biggest feature is we can cut non-ferrous metals with it, along with ferrous metals that we cut with a torch. It does burn at about 30,000 degrees. Some of the hazards with the welding field are burns, electrical shock, fumes and UV light. One of the biggest dangers in welding is burns. and We take a great deal of care to prevent burns in the industry. Everything from our hard hats to our safety glasses. We have specialized gloves with gauntlets on them that we use to protect the skin, not only from the harmful sparks, but also the ultraviolet light. We don't want it sneaking in anywhere and burning our skin while we're welding you're not gonna notice it while you're performing your task. Some of the ways that we can get electrically shocked are not properly grounded material, cords that are exposed. One of the most important things is to remember that behind the machine is where the electrician does his job and our end of the machine out front where the amperage is very low is where we like to do our job. We always wanna make sure our housekeeping is good and there's not a lot of cables or things in the way, make sure our tools and stuff are insulated and proper grounding techniques are used. Fumes and gases come from not properly cleaned material or from an electrode that we're welding with. Some electrodes have heavier fumes than the others. Some of the things that we can do to protect ourselves is use appropriate respirators, cleaning our metal and things ahead of time and for the welder to learn to keep their head out of the plume of smoke coming off the end of the weld. 
shielded metal arc welding, gas metal arc welding, and gas tungsten arc welding produce a UV light that could potentially burn us if we're not protected properly. Some other types of welding such as submerged arc welding and oxy fuel welding do not require these types of protection from ultraviolet light because they do not produce any. With all types of welding, there is personal protective equipment, which might include a welding helmet or mask, hard hat, safety glasses, ear protection, and respiratory protection. The purpose of a welding helmet is to cut down on UV light to protect the eyes from the bright light of the arc. The hard hat is used to stop a person from bumping their head off of something or keep their head from getting burnt. Safety glasses are for flying objects or objects that may burn your eyes, like UV light. We wear gloves in the welding industry to save us from getting burnt, either from the material or from the UV light. The welding industry is very loud, and in this industry, we are required to wear hearing protection, whether it be earmuffs, earplugs. We have to wear some form of ear protection. In the welding field, we may have to wear respiratory protection using a respirator to protect our respiratory system. During confined space entry to do any welding, there must be some engineering protocol that is followed. We must protect ourselves from any atmospheric conditions that may be inside of the tank. We have to have a sniffer check the atmosphere for the amount of oxygen that's in there and any type of poisonous gases. We also need to have a hole watch and a fire watch present at all times. These are the welding processes we do, some of the hazards that are involved in the welding, and ways to mitigate those hazards. For additional support or questions, contact MSA, the safety company, educational support provided by Triangle Tech.